later he was arrested. And I'll uh, talk about that, that fateful day that, um, that happened. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Crouch family. Thank you, TBN family. God is amazing. Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and let everybody praise the Lord. It truly is good to be here with you on this great evening. I'm the assistant pastor with God's House Church, I'm Pastor Vester Smith, and I'm just glad to be here with you to share and to open up God's Word. It's something about what God wants to do uh, in the lives of His people, and so we're just here uh, just to be here with you and to uh, speak a word uh, unto you. Uh, let us go before the Lord in prayer as we prepare right now. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for your grace and your love, your tender mercies. We thank you, Lord, because there is none like in heaven above, nor is there any like in the earth beneath. For you alone is worthy of honor, praise, and the glory, Lord. Father, I pray that you would give us illumination, Lord. Lord, the illumination of thy word, O oh God. Speak to us, O oh God. Speak through us, Lord God. Not that we may just know the word, O oh God. Not that we may just do a word, but Father, Lord God, that it will be impressed in our hearts and in our spirits, Lord. To walk with you, Lord God, in a way that we never walked with you before. To see, O oh God, a brand new day, Lord God, in a brand new light, Father. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord. We thank you for your word that we're about to receive on this evening. Now have your way and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We're just glad to be with you uh, on this uh, evening. And I believe that we have a word for you uh, today. If you would, turn with me into your Bibles to the book of uh, St. John, chapter number 6. And I want us to read just, I'm going to read a few verses from uh, 16 to verse number uh, 21. And then we're going to digress as we always do. And then we're going to regress and begin to bring us up to date where we are. That sound pretty good? Let us go forth and just begin to look at that just for a minute. It says, and when evening was come... His disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come, was not come, come to them. And the sea arose by reason of the great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship and they were afraid. But he said unto them, it is I, be not afraid. Then they will, willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land where they went. It's something about this particular passage of, of Scripture, and a lot of times we love to get uh, to this portion about when Jesus was on the sea, uh, but there's so much more uh, that happens even before this uh, that I want to kind of share with you because I believe it's really going to help our understanding uh, tonight. Uh, when we look back into the passages of Scripture, one of the things that we find out early on is that we find that uh, the disciples were sent out on a missionary uh, journey. Their job was to go into the cities and their job was to preach uh, the kingdom uh, of God that was getting ready to come. And as they went out and as they would go, they were not supposed to any, take any money, not supposed to take any kind of special equipment or any of those kind of things. They were just supposed to go. And he says, listen, Jesus says, listen, he says, whoever receives uh, the word that you speak, they receive me. He says, but whoever receives not the word, he says, then when you leave that city, he says, shake the dust off of your feet. He says, it will be worse for them in the day of uh, judgment than what it was in the times of Sodom and Gomorrah. It is something for Jesus to make that statement, to let us know that at all times, it does not mean that things are going to go uh, the way that we plan or the way that we have uh, set up or the way that we have designed, even in our, our mind. I know oftentimes in ministry, there's some things that we want to do. And then all of a sudden, when we look up and we find out some of the things just didn't work out uh, the way we panned it out, but they worked out the way God panned it out. And so, therefore, we got to make sure that we stay in tune uh, with the Lord and the plan of the Lord and what God is doing. So he tells them, he says, so don't carry a sack with you. In other words, what he says is that, he says, listen, he says, we're going to see how this thing begins to affect uh, the people uh, that is that you come to and how it's going to affect whether or not they will hear uh, and abide according to the word of the Lord, whether or not they will receive the kingdom. I suspect even right now uh, that even might be some even under the sound of my voice. I hope, I hope they're not. Uh, but it might be some even under the sound of my voice uh, to where they're questioning, uh, what, what, why am I here? What is going on in my life? Is my praying 
in, in, in vain? Is, is my living in vain? Is, 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 my, is my doing all these works uh, that I have uh, done before the Lord, I want to know, is it in, in vain? And we're going to answer that question uh, in a little bit, but, but sometimes we can find ourselves in a place to where we begin to allow our life and our circumstances, situations, the things that we hear and the places that we go to begin to get us down. But I want you to understand that we got to pop up, get up, and get ourselves in line with the word. So the disciples, they were there and they were out on this missionary journey. While out on this missionary journey, the Bible says that our Herod had John the Baptist's head cut off. In other words, he had him beheaded because he enjoyed the way that his daughter danced, his uh, stepdaughter danced, and she decided that she wanted the head of John the Baptist. And so therefore, he had his head uh, uh, cut off. And so therefore, when, when they come back to Jesus, they're explaining to Jesus, the disciples did, about all the things that had taken place. They're explaining to Jesus about even how the demons had been casted out, they had, how they had healed the sick, how they had raised some folks. And so they was explaining to Jesus these different things. They explained to Jesus about how they were uh, even preaching concerning the kingdom of God. So Jesus, he says, come on. Now, this is critical because I want you to understand that, that sometimes even in the midst of what we're doing, we can get tired sometimes. And so Jesus, he says, come on, let's go to a place where we can get some rest. Jesus had also been ministering that whole day as well. And so therefore, the disciples had come, they had met back up, and here they were now uh, uh, back and getting ready to go to a deserted place, getting ready to go to a place that went, where it wasn't, a, it wasn't anybody there. But the Bible says that as they got up and as they left, some of the people that were there jumped up and ran and went to the place and got there before Jesus and his disciples had gotten there. I don't know about you, but sometimes you can get tired. Sometimes you can get a little weary. Amen. And can you imagine, here it is, you're thinking that you're getting ready to go to a place to where you're getting ready to have some relaxation. And then it's kind of like going out to dinner. You're getting ready to go out to dinner and you're getting ready to have some relaxation and you're feeling that, hey, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, I just want to relax. I, I can let my hair down and, and nobody bother me. And then all of a sudden, before you get there, there's a multitude of people. There's a multitude of people. And the Bible says that because of that multitude of people that was there, Jesus looked on them with compassion. Now, I can imagine that the disciples was probably saying to themselves, here we go. Here we go. The Bible says that he looked on them with compassion. And one of the things that it talks about over in Mark, because these, these gospels, the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all wrote concerning uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, the feeding of the 5,000. They all wrote concerning uh, uh, Jesus being, uh, you know, walking on the sea. And so they all wrote that. And this is how uh, one of, this is how Mark put it in his writing. Uh, Mark 6, verse number 34, it says, And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. He says, they were like sheep not having a shepherd. A little later on, Jesus, he begins to pray. He says, I, I, he says, pray th uh, that the Lord of the harvest will send workers into the vineyard. Will send workers into the vineyard. And in order to be a worker in the vineyard, you got to first learn how to serve. Amen? You, get, you got to know how to serve. You can't just get up and begin to start saying, hey, listen, I, I'm licensed today because I went and I took a few classes. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. But what has to happen is that it has to be some teaching. And so Jesus was teaching. So he, he taught them uh, uh, He taught them about you know things that they needed to know and things that they needed to understand, things about the kingdom that, that, that could not have been taught by anybody else but him. John the Baptist spoke of the kingdom, but Jesus lived where? In the kingdom. And so Jesus had the right to speak. John said it this way. He says, I am earthly, but he is from above. And so John knew uh, that Jesus uh, was the one who was able to give this commission. And so the Bible says that Jesus went out and had compassion. When you think about somebody having compassion on, on someone, you got to think about it from, from the standpoint that here, you know, somebody looks on one and we begin to start saying, you know, man, I, I show feel for them. What, 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 what can I do? And Jesus was looking at them and he was saying, man, he said they have blind guides. He said they have no leadership. 
They have folks that, 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 that are just getting, getting in the way. And, you know, think about it just for a minute. When we look at this situation that we're dealing with, uh, even this pandemic, and we also look at the situation of the death of uh, George Floyd, uh, um, I hear all the time where people are saying all lives matter. And I agree with that 100%. But the problem is that they're missing the point. And the point is not about all lives. The point is about a life. It is a life. And whenever we begin to start looking at a life, and so when you see a people that has been uh, spit upon and, and, and downgraded and, and downtrodden and everything else, there should be some, some serious and some real compassion. We should not continue to walk by and look at our brothers and our sisters and say, well, man, I'm so glad it's really not me. We say we have compassion, but really, uh, do we really have the compassion like we really should? And so therefore, even now, we have preachers and teachers. Touch this thing about Black Lives Matter, but I want to sit here just for a minute, just for a second, and begin to let you know that Black Lives do matter. Black Lives do matter. Somebody said all lives. I'm not talking about all lives. I'm talking about Black Lives. Look at your neighbor and say Black Lives. Black Lives do matter. Can I go just a little bit deeper into it? I'm not going to get off my point, but I just want to kind of throw that out there just for a minute. When Jesus went, the Bible talks about over in Luke chapter number 15, it talks about whenever they had lost, they had lost uh, uh, a lost sheep. He says, does he not leave the 90 and 9 and go after the 1? In other words, what are you saying? He says, listen, he says, the 99 is okay. That is the majority of all lives. He says, but the 1, he says, the 1 that has left, he says, that is the 1 that I am concerned with. I'm talking about the 1. Quit using words and slogans whereby we begin to try to build ourselves up, but yet not do anything that we should be doing. And so when we begin to start saying, all lives matter. If you're not very careful, you can get to the place where you begin to become in, in, in compassionate. Yes, we understand all lives matter. But right now, what we're talking about is the things that have happened to black folks down through the years since 1619, since we arrived here in the United States. I want you to understand that it, that is a problem. When we look at the Declaration of Independence, it is such a problem that even the words that they put in there, that every man is created equal, has not even stood even until this day that we live in, in right now. And so therefore, if we say that all lives matter, let us start with the root of the problem. Let me go, let me go just a little bit further. I'm going to get back, in, back on this in just, just a minute. I served in the military. And even while serving in the military, one of the things that happened was that, yes, there was a flag, but I wasn't worshiping the flag. My job was not to worship the flag. My job was to fight for the United States of America. And there was a banner that was there that I fought underneath the banner that all lives were equal and that everyone had the right uh, uh, to life and the freedom of life. I didn't just fight for whites. I didn't just fight for blacks. But I fought for all lives matter. And so, therefore, whenever someone begins to kneel down before the flag, don't take it as an offense that they're kneeling down because the flag is just a symbol. Come on, somebody. If you don't utilize the very things that God has put in you, come on, you'll be walking around symbolizing a whole lot of things all your life, and you'll never get to the meat, never get to the problem, never get to the real deal of the matter. Come on, somebody, I feel the Holy Ghost getting ready to rise right now. It is expedient that we begin to stop putting on and begin to act like who we really say that we are. If we say that we're Christians, if we say that we're Christ-like, let us live let us help. Come on, somebody here. Let us love one another. When Jesus saw the woman that had the withered hand, what did, she, what did he do? He went over and he touched. When he saw the mother, you know, at the coffin with her son, he went over and touched the individual coffin. Somebody say it was, oh, I don't know how I got there, but I'm here right now. It was the individual coffin that he went to. Oh, big God. What, what are you saying, Elder? I'm trying to get us to understand uh, that, that, that we all matter in, in this right here. Let us not pacify this. I've heard some people say, you know, man, I'm over this. You over what? What is it that you over? What is it that you just so sick and that you're so tired of? What is it that you just can't get enough of? And now you're ready to throw it underneath the back burner. What were you doing before and what are you doing now? Come on, somebody here. Or are you just saying, I'm over this? I'm over the protest, but everybody that's protesting is not protesting because they're looking to fight. 
The kind of fight they recognize is that, hey, listen, we got a long fight. Even as John Lewis recognized that we had a long fight and fought from way back then, even until the day of his passing. And so, therefore, we, we got to look at this thing in a different light. We got to look at it in a different light and not pacify, not use the same old slogans, not use the same old things. We got to begin to kneel down before God. Let me move on. Let me move on. But I wanted to throw that out there. We're talking about having compassion. Jesus looked on them with compassion because they were as sheep without a shepherd. In other words, can you imagine uh, uh, someone just going about their day-to-day -day lives, even as we look right now? Now, this might be kind of offensive. In my, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but what I want to do is make, make sure we understand what is going on. Right now, we have a, a mass mandate right here in New Mexico. And the reason for the mass mandate is because we are dealing with this COVID-19. And a lot of people are saying, I'm not going to wear a mask because it inconveniences me. But what will be unto the man? What will be unto the man that catches it and gives it to someone else because they felt like they were a little bit inconvenienced? This is a time now where we got to look after ourselves and we got to look after one another. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. So Jesus, he's looking down. Note this right here. The Bible says that Jesus, he has compassion on them. So he begins to start teaching them the word of God, looking to train up uh, those who would come, those who would be disciples, those who would uh, come in and not be from the standpoint about themselves, but be about the Lord's business, that the kingdom might flourish and that the people might begin to rejoice and have a living like they never had before. In other words, it was a time when Jesus was looking to bring some people out. So he looks amongst them and he says, listen, he says, Phil, he says, it's time for us to feed the people. Philip looks and he begins to say, well, you know, okay, Lord, well, you know, um, there's a whole lot of people out here. He says, well, take your count. He says, well, you know, I counted 5,000 men and that ain't even including the women and children. Oh, so you said about 15,000. Yeah. Well, did you find any food that was out there? Well, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But, but. I mean, he said, but Lord, if we worked for a whole year, we wouldn't have enough to pay for all this right here, for all these people uh, uh, to be, because Jesus, he says, he says, I, I know that you're there. He says, but I want you to give them something to eat. Why don't you give them something to eat? Can you imagine the look that had to be on his face whenever Jesus began to inquire about him to give them something to eat? I, I, I have to ask the question because now it is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Why don't you do something about the situation. What are you going to do? And so his suggestion was, as like the other uh, disciples was, well, why don't we send them in the town? Because it's getting late. It's getting right now to be at evening time. I want you to understand something about evening. The Bible says over in the book of Genesis, it says the evening and the morning was the first day. The day started not in the, in the, um, not in the morning like we start our day, the day started in the evening, it says, in the evening and the morning was the first day. I'm going somewhere with this right here because I want us to begin to look and see. And he says, make them sit down in the grass. Make them sit down in the grass by ranks. And so the disciples got them and made everyone sit down in the grass. But remember now, they still got their little attitude going on because they just finished their missionary journey. They've been disturbed. They've been they 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 they're being uh, uh, messed with and stuff like that. And so and now they 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 now they're saying, "Here you are now. You're calling us to wait tables, Lord. You're calling us to wait tables." And and here we are now. We, we're waiting on tables. And and so here, uh, some see sometimes you can be in the midst of a miracle, but because of our begrudging and because of where we are sometimes, we won't see the miracle for what it is, uh, and we won't see the hand of God that is upon our life and what he wants to do for us uh, simply because we are upset because of the circumstance, because our body is tired, or because of so many other different situations that we find ourselves surrounded in. Nothing has happened. Come on, somebody. There's been some threats that have been made, but at the end of the threat, still nothing has happened. See, some folks are saying, you know, well, hey, listen, I should have been out of my home. Yeah, you should have been, but yet you're still in there. I should my light should have been turned off, but yet you still got on lights. My water should have been disconnected, but yet your water's still running. I mean, come on, somebody here. And so we keep on looking at the condition of the situation and not looking at the one who has the authority over here, we say, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Can I go ahead on and keep keep going just for a minute? And so, therefore, what we find is that the disciples now cause them to sit down. Jesus takes the bread. 
is five loaves of bread and two fish. And the Bible says, and he looked up towards heaven where all our needs come from. And the Bible says, and he blessed it. He blessed it before he broke it. He blessed it before he broke it. Can I say that one more time? He blessed it before he broke it. Because had he broke it, it wouldn't have been blessed. And when we start talking about blessings, we're talking about things beginning to expand. Things beginning to open up. And whenever you begin to start walking in the blessings, you begin to start seeing things beginning to what expand. But you got to make sure that you are in your role and so that you can see and begin to get an understanding of what it is that the Lord is doing. And so he blessed it. He blessed it. And so, and then he what? Then he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples. Let me go back in just for a minute about this right here. Note that the Bible says that he gave it to his disciples disciples to give out. What do you mean he gave it to his disciples to give out? Well, he gave it to his disciples because those were the ones that he was training for the mission. He says, pray that the Lord will send workers where into the field. I want you to understand, child of God, that we are workers. And sometimes it might seem like the situations that we find ourselves in is not altogether lovely, but I want you to understand that you are being blessed by and by. God is doing some things in your life that you can't even imagine, but what you got to do is quit worrying about the things that you want to happen and begin to start getting into God's program and seeing what it is that he wants to happen. So he says, I will have compassion on the people. He blessed it and he broke it. And the Bible says that they ate so much uh, to the point that they were all filled. What do you mean filled? He says, man, that they were all filled. All filled? He said, yes. He says, all of them was filled. He says, but not only were they all filled, he says, but he took out what? Fragments. Oh, yes, 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 yes. He took out what? Fragments. I want you to understand that whenever he took up fragments, he took up fragments that was even more than what they had even started off with. And so the thing about it is that when we begin to look at that there was fragments, in other words, what he's saying, he says, there was more than enough that was still left over and they were already filled up. Folks laying down on the grass, the Bible says that it was much grass out there. John said there was much grass out there and they laying all down on the grass because they were filled. Field. Somebody say field. Oh, I'm finna go somewhere in just a minute. We finna get there. We're not even there yet. We're just island the motor. But he says that they were filled. They were filled to the full. Look at your neighbor and say being filled to the full. I got to ask you a question even right now. Are you filled to the full? Are you filled up with the Holy Spirit? Are you filled with what God wants to do uh, in your life? What is it that you're contemplating? What is it that you're thinking about even right now whereby you have put God on the back burner and yet you want your things to be accomplished? I want you to understand. I know that you're tired. I know that you might be frustrated, but put a smile on your face and change that frown. Come on, somebody, to the crown uh, and begin to report that, hey, listen, I'm going to do the will of the Lord no matter what it takes. And whenever you begin to start doing the will of the Lord, keep your eyes open. Don't be this grown, don't be this maid, don't be any of those things, but keep your eyes focused because when the Lord gets ready to come in, he's going to fill you, not only fill you, but fill you to the place of the overflowing. That's a word for somebody right now. I knew that even as it rolled off the lip. I'm going to say it one more time because it felt pretty good. That is a word for someone. Even as it flowed off my tongue, I knew that even right then that God says he is filling somebody even right now. Your, your faith has been encouraged and you have changed from the place that you were and now your eyes are being opened. Come on, somebody here. You begin to start rejecting, but that very thing that God told you to do, that you felt like you didn't want to do that you felt was a hindrance it is your blessing and not only will it fill you up but it's going to fill you to the overflowing it's going to give you greater than what you ever even expected and so the disciples are walking around not only are they getting worried about the kingdom not only are they learning about the kingdom but now they're changing they're changing on the inside and so jesus the bible says that it was getting late and jesus sent the disciples away that kind of brings us up to where we are. He sent the disciples away, and the disciples get on the boat. And as they get on the boat, the Bible says Jesus stays back. 
uh, for the crowd. They was trying to make him king. And Jesus was dispersing the crowd, getting rid of the crowd. The Bible says that Jesus went into the place of prayer. Went into the place of prayer. Now, I want you to understand that whenever we start talking about the place of prayer, that is that place between you and God. That is the place where you and God knows. I know folks tell you where to pray and when to pray and everything else, but what I want you to do, you got to find that secret place. You got to find that place where it's just between you uh, and the Lord. And here we find Jesus, it was just, just him and his father uh, uh, talking back and forth and, and, and about the mission and about the goal and what it was that he was to accomplish while he was here on earth. He was getting more strength. Come on, somebody here. Jesus says, I only do the things that I see my father do. And and so therefore he was emulating the very thing that the father had did and had showed him. And so when he got to the earth in flesh and blood, he was able to fulfill the very will that he was supposed to fulfill. Can I go ahead on and teach just for a minute? I feel like teaching tonight because we got to get this thing. When you get it, you're going to have a whole brand new revelation and a brand new illumination about what it is that God is doing even in your life right now. Can I go there just for a minute? So now look, look here. Verse 16. That's what we started at. It says, and when evening was now come, when uh, St. John chapter 6, verse 16, when evening was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. He said it was dark, but Jesus would not come to them. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. It says, and the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. Now we begin to see that the wind now is beginning to become boisterous and the wind is doing some things in there. But Jesus had already told them to go down and to get on the boat. Don't you remember before uh, earlier chapters, whenever uh, they had got on the boat and Jesus said, get on the boat, we go to the other side. See, it was still the same command whether Jesus was on the boat or whether he wasn't on the boat. It still was the same command. Go get on the boat and go ahead on and proceed to where you're going. I'll be there in a little bit. Don't you worry about me. I'm going to get there. I'm going to make it there. And so therefore, it was the same word. I, I, hope, I hope somebody understand it. It was the same word that was spoken by the word. What do you mean spoken by the word? It was the same one who created the heavens and the earth. The same one who says all things were made by him and there was not anything made that was made. When he tell you to get going, you just get going. Anything else that tries to go along with you has to detach itself from you because it cannot stand in the presence of the life-changing king. Whether he is with you side by side or whether he send you out on the mission, it cannot stand. So just as much, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, just as much as the mission was whenever they had to go and begin to go on the missionary journey and they had to go out and they had to, to speak the word and, and, and folks were healed. And, and demons were cast out. Come on, somebody here. Uh, folks were raised from the dead. Raised from the dead, and, and the word of the kingdom was preached just as much as that was spoken. Yeah, yeah. Just as much as that was spoken. And it was, I realized, the same thing was spoken here. Why? Because it is the king of kings who is speaking. Can I say one, one thing to you? There is not one jot nor tittle that shall fall from the word. The Bible says that... Not one jot or tittle from the law shall fall from the word. Now, we recognize that when we deal with the law, that there were sacrifices that were made concerning uh, the law. And so those sacrifices have been rendered under Jesus Christ. And so he paid the price for our sacrifice. He paid it all. He paid it all. But yet there are still the other laws that we have to abhor, uh, adhere to in order to walk therein that we might be what God wants us to be. So I would say that we need to go back in and do a study of those to make sure we got those uh, correct. Because sometimes people are saying, you don't need that. No, 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 no. It was Jesus that spoke the word even back then. I want you to understand that even in the book of Exodus, he is the I am. This is what he says in the book of St. John. He says, before Abraham was, he says, I am. And Abraham was before the book of Exodus. But he says, before Abraham was, I am. Oh, come on. You got to get this. You got to get this. And so he sends them out on another mission. Now, it does not seem like it is the same mission, but nevertheless, it's still a mission. Go get in the boat. I'll be there later. Go ahead on and go where you're going. I'll be there later. It was just as much of a calling as the calling that he had sent them out initially was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody just got that. Somebody just got that. 
It, 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 was, it was the same call. It, had, it carried the same weight. It had the same authority behind it. And there was nothing that was going to be able to keep them from getting to their point in their destination. Can we go ahead on? Man, we got some stuff to cover tonight. Whoo, this is good. Verse 18, it says, And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. The sea rose up. It says, So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. They were afraid. Now the Bible says that this right here happened at the fourth watch of the night. That's what one of the other gospel writers write, that it happened in the fourth hour of the night. Now, many of us have been taught to be afraid of the dark, have been taught to stay up out of the dark. And so therefore we think that whenever light comes, that light is what brings uh, uh, correction and, and those kind of things. But I want you to understand that here we find that Jesus, it was in the fourth watch of the night. That is the hours between 3 and 6 a.m. That is one of the darkest times that you would find. And so when you find that hour of 3 to 6 a.m., the Bible says that, 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 he, that, he, that Jesus came what, walking to them when? On the water. But before he came walking to them on the water, he had did what? Prayed. Don't you know that it's in the darkest times, that it's in the times when it seemed like uh, everything is breaking loose? That's the time whenever you really need to get down and pray. 3 to 6 a.m. begins to change some things. When you think about you getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, praying, what happens at 3 o'clock in the morning? Ain't nothing going on. Who's up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Ain't nobody going on. What's blocking you at 3 o'clock in the morning? There's no kind of blocks that's there. The thing is, is, is why open for you to begin. When do your dreams come? They come at they come at nighttime. Elder Shelby, Pastor Damon Shelby preached last night. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Here it is. We're talking about another, even another time span. We're talking about three o'clock. We're talking about the time that is the time of, of seclusion. We're talking about the time of breakthrough. We're talking about the time where it seems like it's dark, but really it is light. I want you to understand some that the Bible says that whenever God created the heavens and the earth, he called the evening what? The first day. The evening, then the morning, the first day. He didn't call it when it came to light. He called it when it was darkness because God moved me and where? In the darkness. And then brought those things where? Into the light. In other words, what he did, he spoke those things in the time of darkness and brought it where? Into the light. I want you to understand that some of your very greatest revelation is going to come at the dark time. Now, I know you keep on saying, well, you don't understand. That's when I get my sleep. That's when you need to get up. You need to maybe set your alarm clock, change your alarm clock so that you can get up just a little bit earlier. Get up just a little bit earlier. Don't mean you got to step all night. Go ahead on and get that time in with the Lord. Then go on back to sleep. I found out, one of the things I found out that when I get up and I'm praying with the Lord, and then all of a sudden I go back to sleep, all kinds of dreams, visions come to me. Even this morning, dreams and visions were coming to me. And I'm just sitting there and I'm naming them and I'm claiming them and I'm beginning to look at them. Oh, this is that, Lord. This is that. And the Lord was revealing to me, yes, that, that's what that is. Yeah, 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 son, I see a lot of sun and I see a lot of dots. What is that? He says, well, the sand is the earth. He says, and the people are the dots. Oh, well, oh, wow, Lord, you know, I could have spent a million years and never understood that. A million years never even understood that. But because uh, uh, the Lord had woke me up early in the morning, the Lord was able to give me that dream, able to give me that vision. And, 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 and I was able to inquire of the Lord, Lord, what does this mean? There are some things that is in Scripture. Can I say this to you? There are some things that is in Scripture to where we know how to do, we, we know the Word, and we know how to do what we call doing the Word. Amen? But... Our heart is the issue. And so we can do some things, but our heart not be lined up with God. And so we can give the appearance that, man, I'm just being so righteous. And so the appearance can look outwardly. I spoke just uh, yesterday, and we talked about Saul and how uh, Saul, he uh, asked Samuel the prophet to come with him in order to make him look good in front of the people. That's over in 1 Samuel chapter number 15. Just come with me in order to make me look good in front of the people. Not because he had a heart after God, but because he wanted to look good in front of the people. You can do the things in front of the people. You can say the things in front of the people, but yet your heart still be far from God. Jesus hung out, and, I mean, Judas hung out with Jesus. And one of the things Jesus says, did not I choose the 12 of you, and yet one of you is a devil. He says, one of you is a devil. And so here we find in this particular verse, he says, so when they had rode, and they have been roaring all night. 
It says they saw a spirit and they didn't they couldn't tell who it was, the Bible says in one of the other gospels. And they, they were trying to find out who is this walking on the water. And they, the Bible says, and they became afraid. Because it was at a dark time. It was at a time and they couldn't make out who it was. Had it been in the light time, they would have been able to make out who it was. But Jesus wants you to understand that, hey, listen, you know, you should be able to just hear my voice. My voice should be able to, to should, should be able to be my description towards you. He says, because my sheep hears my voice and another they will not follow. If you are following another voice, then you might not be a sheep. Let me say that one more time. If you're following another voice, then you may not be a sheep. But know the voice of the Lord. Know the voice of the Lord. And so therefore, they heard his voice. Over in St. John chapter 20, it talks about uh, uh, um, uh, when Jesus, he spoke to the disciples, but they didn't recognize who he was. After his resurrection, they didn't recognize who he was. And he was on the shore, and yet they was out in the, in the, in the sea. And Jesus made this statement. He says, have you caught anything? And they said, nothing. He says, well, cast your net on the other side. And when he cast the net on the other side, John told Peter, Peter, Peter. It's the Lord. And Peter jumped out of the boat and began to swim to shore because he recognized the voice of the Lord. Are you able to recognize the voice of the Lord even when it's dark outside? Can you recognize his voice? Can you recognize his call? Can you recognize that he's speaking to you? Him being your heavenly father. Share with you what he wants to do. He said, but they were greatly afraid. But verse number 20 says, he says, but he said unto them, it is I. Be not afraid. I'm going to say that one more time because that's getting ready to sink in. He says, it is I. Be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship and immediately the ship was at the land wherever they went. It says they immediately received him into the ship. But that was also the time when Peter got out and began to walk on the water. And Peter began to say, Lord, if it is you, allow me to come. And Peter jumps out of the boat and Peter begins to walk on water. Because it was the Lord who had bid him to come. It was the same God that we spoke earlier that had sent them out on the missionary journey. It was the same God that began to tell them, get in the boat, we go to the other side. And now it was the same God that told them, hey, told him, come come. Are you hearing the instructions of the Lord? Everybody don't have the same instructions. Everybody's not called to do the same thing. And so you got to make sure that your relationship is so tight and so knit with the Lord that you hear what the Lord is saying. I want you to understand that you got to stay in there and don't give up. King Saul one of the things that he did, the Bible says that the Lord rejected him because King Saul rejected the Lord. When you think about King Saul rejecting the Lord, you know, think about it. In other words, Saul didn't go back and seek after the Lord. Even in his rejection, he should have came to the point where he says, you know what? No, no, no. The Lord is my God. But Saul was still of the mindset that, you know what? I just want God to do what I want him to do. And that's it. I don't want him to be head of my life. I don't want him to be king of kings. I don't want him to be Lord of lords. See, some folks want to be saved. But they don't want to be underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ. Underneath the rulership of Jesus Christ. But if you're not going to be underneath his rulership, then you're not going to be saved. Because he comes to rule. Amen. Can I keep on going just for a minute? And so they immediately grab him inside the ship. Now a lot of times we get all excited because we start seeing Jesus walking on the water. And that is something to be excited about because he walked on the water. But the Bible says that the disciples were hardened in their hearts. It says that they were, they, 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 they were upset. And like I said, I, I contend they were upset because they were, they was out there working. But then the Bible says that when they looked at Jesus walking on the water, they were they marveled at it because they could not understand, man, what in the world? Who is this man 
that is walking on the water. I'm not just talking about head knowledge. I'm not just seeing a man walk across the water that just walks on the earth. I'm seeing the God man. I'm seeing a man who's different than any other man that has ever uh, came to the face of this earth. I'm seeing the one who created the heavens and the earth. I'm seeing the one who spoke all things into existence. I'm seeing the one who's able to provide all of our needs, no matter even if it's during a pandemic, God is still able to provide your every single need. You might not have all that you want, but you will have all that you need. God, David said it this way. David says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I, I, he says, I've, never, I've seen a lot of things. He says, but that I have not seen. Sometimes it, and he says over to the right of me, he says, I allowed you to go hungry so that you would know that I'm able to provide for you. I allowed you not to have a change of shoes so that you would know that the shoes that you got on, I'm able to keep them and to keep you clothed. I allowed you, he says, listen, he says, I put the sun you know, out there. He says, listen, he says, I put the cloud over you. He says, and I kept you all these years and kept you all this time. You thought it was your job that had been keeping you, but the Lord said, it has never been your job. I've been your sustainer. I've been the one that has been providing. I've been the one that has been making a way for you when there seemed to be no way. And you got nerve enough to say, who am I? He asked Thomas this way, have I not been alone with you so long that you don't know who I am? That you don't know. He says, in other words, you should know who I am. Can I keep on going? Because I just want to show you something just for a minute. This Passion, this part that we're getting ready to go into is so important because we just read the story about what happened before he walked on the water. But it's equally important to understand what happened after Jesus walks on the water. Verse number 25 says it this way. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou here? In other words, they were saying, Lord, when did you get over here to the other side of the sea? These right here are the ones that he had fed, but remember, Jesus took off. Jesus left in the middle of the night, the fourth watch of the night, and came walking on the water. And so now they're looking for Jesus. They're looking for him. And know what Jesus says in verse number 26, St. John 6 and 26. Jesus answered him and said, Verily I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Some, even under the sound of my, my voice, are so frantic right now that you are running to and fro behind every single thing trying to figure out how it is going to work for you. And you keep on filling up your belly. You keep on filling up your belly with worry and everything else now uh, because the times have different. But I want you to understand that your God is no different. He's no different. Know what he says in 27. He says, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for whom hath God the Father sealed. He says, what? He says, now, I'm going to give it to the ones that God has already sealed. And you might be saying, well, how do I know that I've been sealed? Well, God knows the difference about whether or not a man has been sealed. But one of the ways that the sealing uh, comes in is that God pours out his spirit. And therefore, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord is what seals us. See, a man can know the the, the, can know um, the word of God and not know the God of the word. Amen? So they can know that. And so what is it that brings us into that personal relationship? It is the Holy Spirit. Now, some folks might say, well, Elder, you know, I've had the Holy Spirit for a number of years. But let me ask you this question right here. Have you walked in the Holy Spirit? Are you obeying as the Spirit of, of the living God begins to lead and guide you? Are you walking in peace and joy and long-suffering? How is it that you are walking? Does the fruits of the Spirit manifest uh, in your life? And if they do not, then maybe you need to go back and get a refilling. Amen? And if they do, continue to walk with God and begin to walk and see what God would do. And so what he does is that he seals. Somebody say he seals. In other words, when you put a stamp, when you take, when you take it and you uh, stamp it on there, that is a seal. And that seal uh, represents that you belong to him. 
That is what the seal represents, that you belong to God. And so, therefore, since Jesus is sealed, we are sealed by him and by what? By his spirit that abides down on the inside of us. And so, therefore, we are sealed also. The child of God is sealed. And so he says, labor not for that, you know, uh, which perisheth. I'm not saying that God is not going to provide, but note though, he does this miracle for the very situation to let them know that he is a provider. In other words, he says, listen, he says, what I want you to do, I want you to do something for me. I want you to think back about the last time this happened. Well, what do you mean, Lord, about the last time that it happened? Well, Lord, I can't think that far back. All I can do is just begin to know what I read. And when I read it in the book, I read it in Exodus, how you had provided bread. And Jesus, he says, you know, Jesus, he says, you are correct. I was the one who provided bread. It wasn't Moses uh, that provided, you know, for you. I was the one who provided for you while you were in your wilderness. And I called you out of slavery and brought you into freedom, bring you into the promised land. How goes the, the wilderness is how goes the promised land. If you don't act right in the wilderness, you're not going to act right when you get into the promised land. Come on, somebody here. But I want you to understand that the Lord wants you wants to do some stuff with you even right now. While you are in the place that you are, he wants to do something with you even right now. So he lets him know. He says, listen. He says, so don't labor for that. Then this is what he say. Then he said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. He says, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. It's not just enough to say that I believe, but, it, but belief comes with action, and not only action, but it also comes with transformation by the Holy Spirit. And so what happens is that when we begin to start saying, I believe, that means that my ways begin to start becoming uh, uh, the, the ways whereby God uh, dwells and what he does. And so therefore, we begin to start hearing that saying, he's a chip off the old block. What do you mean? He's just like his father. He had just like, act just like him. See, it's not so much as what Jesus would do. Come on, somebody. But it's about what he would do with the heart that he would do it with. And so we got to understand that as we move forward, it cannot only be uh, from the standpoint, I have done the will of the Lord. No, 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 no. It has to be something that has been impressed upon you. If you know that you've done it, then that's one thing. But yet your intent behind it is a whole nother thing. And so we have to ask the Lord, search me, search me, cleanse me, Lord, and see if there's any way that is, that, that is not like you in me, Lord, and renew me, Lord, and make me whole. Lord, let me have a loving spirit. Lord, let me be kind and let me be uh, joyful, Lord. Lord, let me let me be uh, forgiving, Lord, because that is your word. I want the ultimate of what God has for me. I don't want to shuck and jive. I want everything that God has for me. You should want the same thing. Each and every one of us should want the same thing, that we should want uh, all that God has for, for us. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You got to know that, beloved. You got to know that it's working together for your good. So he said, so what mighty words can we work? Well, what, is it, what, what is it that we can do? He says, well, this is what you can do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on him and you shall be saved. Then they said, therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? And so some of us, even right now, we've been in church all our lives. And we keep on asking, well, Lord, what you going to show us? Well, Lord, what you going to show me? Lord, when you going to show me this? When you going to show me that? And the Lord says, I shouldn't have to show you anything. You say that you've been walking with me. And if you've been walking with me, then there should be some fruit in your walk. There should be some fruit in your talk. It should be some integrity. It should be some change in your life. You shouldn't be the same that you were uh, a few days ago. And whenever you, if you haven't grown since you've been saved, then shame on you. You need to get yourself together. You really need to get yourself together. If I haven't grown since I've been saved, shame on me. It's been 25 years now. That means I need to get myself together. Got to get myself together. Amen. But we should be growing every single day. Growing in the Lord and knowing what God wants to do in us and, and through us. Come on, somebody here. We should not be uh, uh, like like uh, um, one that is being tossed to and fro, but we should have some stability about ourselves now. We should be stable now. Come on, somebody here. We should under, we should have an understanding of reading and studying God's word. We should be teachers. He says, pray that the Lord will send out our workers into the harvest. We should be teachers, and some, unfortunately, still have the need of milk. When we should be teaching the word of God, when we come into the class, we should be able to say amen because we know that it is amen, not because everybody else is talking about Fruit Loops and you're saying amen to Fruit Loops. 
No, 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 no. We should be able to say amen because it corresponds with what we know about God and what he does and how we begin to live and set up our very own lives. That there has been a great change in us and we know that he has done that change. Here we find that this group of people, he says, you follow me for the fishes and the loaves. You were looking for me for the fishes and the loaves. And then you got near enough for me to do a miracle. You just said, you just saw I fed all y'all with five loaves of five loaves of bread and two fish. And yet you still got to nerve enough to ask, what are you doing? Show us another sign. Show us another miracle. That's a problem. Look at your name and say that's a problem. I'm almost done. I'm not gonna keep you long. Look at verse number. Verse number 32, it says, Then Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and gives his life unto the world. Jesus gave his life. It was so imperative about him dying for our sins. It was the top of his list from the time of creation, or even before creation, it was at the top of his list. That God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He gave his life for us, shared his blood for us that we might have eternal life. He that knew no sin became sin that we might become righteous. Oh, hallelujah to God. We cannot put anything, we cannot even put anything on our, on our backs to act as if we're all righteous, but we should start living as though we are. We should be living as changed people, as people that have been changed and that have been bought with a price. We should be living this life. We shouldn't be tossed to and fro by every little thing that come up. I see the pandemic. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not um, 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 blind to the fact about where we are. Come on, somebody, amen. I see it. I'm not afraid of it. But I'm gonna do what the Lord tells me to do when it comes to it. If the Lord tells me to go outside, I'll go outside. If the Lord tells me to stay in, I'm going to stay in. What are you saying, Elder? I'm going to do the will of the Lord. And somebody else said, well, I can go outside and do what I want to. Well, you do what you feel the Lord told you to do. But I'm going to do what I feel the Lord has told me to do. And so, therefore, the Lord has told me to stay in, I'm going to stay in. Until when? Until my change comes. And then I'll get out and I'll do what the Lord has. has if the Lord, when the Lord, Whenever the Lord changes it, then I'll change. But until then, I'm going to do what the Lord has me to do even right now. And so therefore, he says, listen, he says, so now he is the bread of life. He is the bread of life. Amen. Verse 35, and Jesus said unto him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. He says, listen, he says, I'm going to give you all that you need. And I'm not just talking about uh, from the physical standpoint. I'm talking about from the, from the, from the spiritual and he says, listen, he says, you shall never hunger. There's some, been some folks that have been out there hungering and, and, and thirsting even right now. And they're trying to figure out where they are in their walk uh, with the Lord. And you got a hunger and you got a thirst and you won't quench it because you won't go to the word of God. And then as you go to the word of God, you got to begin to enact those things. And the enactment is going to separate you from some people. It's going to cause you to have to separate. Jesus says, you know, listen, he said, I've come to bring a sword. He says, to divide, to divide a mother against a daughter, a son against his father. He says, come. In other words, there's going to be a separation that is going to take place if you're going to walk with Jesus. And there's going to be some things that where you won't, you won't have to separate. And sometimes people are just going to separate from you uh, simply because you have taken up that I'm going to walk with Jesus. I don't care who it identifies me with or separates me from. I'm going to walk with Jesus. And so, therefore, what happens is that we begin to start seeing. He says, listen, he said, and you shall never hunger. Neither shall you thirst. Some of you, even right now, because of the thirst and because of the hunger, it is because you have not gotten up and begin to move into that which God has unctioned unto you. And you're wondering why you're so bitter and you're wondering why things are not going well and you're wondering, and wondering why there's no peace. It is because you're still sitting around and you're still waiting on God to do something. But the Lord says, get up and move and do what it is I've told you to do even right now. David had to go into battle with Goliath, even though God had chosen him to be anointed king. He had to wait on his kingship in order to, to mature to the place where he could be king and be what God wanted him to be. But in the meantime, somebody say in the meantime, there was the training. And so God had set David up uh, for the training. He had David playing music. David was a worshiper. David knew something about God and about the goodness of the Lord. And David had spent a lot of time worshiping. How do we worship? We worship in spirit and in truth. How do we do it? We do it by being obedient to the will of the Lord, having the heart of God and watching him, and he becomes our father. 
And we begin to start saying, Lord, you've done this thing. Great and mighty acts are your ways. This and I'm through. This and I'm through. It says that the disciples who had followed that day that had eaten all the fishes and the loaves, the Bible says that they went and they followed him no more. They were murmuring and complaining at his sayings. Jesus says, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you can have no part with me. They began to become upset. And they went away. And yet, Jesus turns to the twelve and he says, will you go also? Many folks will constitute that as the biggest failure in life. But Jesus says, those, the only ones that can come is the ones that are called by my Father. And so everybody's not going to receive this word. Everybody's not going to stick around. He says, but only the ones that have been called by my father. He says, so I, I, I ask you the question. You 12 that have been with me, will you leave also? Peter says this in verse number 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus turns to him, he says, Simon, he says, have not I chosen you, the twelve? And they say, yea, Lord. And he says, and yet one of you, even in my midst, he says, is a devil. There was nothing that got past him. Nothing that got past him. There was no need of us sitting around playing like we in church if we're not in church. But I would each urge each and every one of us to begin to Line ourselves up with God, with his intent. Lord, I don't, I don't see this. Lord, I don't understand this. The disciples oftentimes would be like, you know, well, you know, I don't understand this. And Jesus says, you know, are you faithless too? In other words, what he said, come on, sit on down. Let me explain that. Let me explain it to you. If you don't understand it, go back to the Lord and ask him. If you don't understand why, why he did what he did, go back to the Lord and ask him. Talk to the Lord. Find out. Uh, about that. Find out his intent. Lord, what, what, what is your intentions behind this right here? Oftentimes we can read and really don't even understand the intent uh, that was behind it. But we want to know the intent. That Jesus, his intent, what was it? To show them who he was. To show them that he was going to go to the cross. To show them that he had all power and all power was given unto, unto him. And to show them that no man can come except the Father draw, draw, draw them. And those who were going to stay were going to stay. And those who were going to depart were going to depart. He says, but nevertheless, you stick. You hang on in there because it has already been given unto you that you might be sealed by the glory of God. Might be sealed. Saints of the Most High, I don't know about you. But I want to be well pleasing in the Lord's sight. And we can have the victory on this side of heaven even right now. But in that fourth watch, man, it's early. But it pays off. It will set your day, that fourth watch prayer. It will set your day. It will change how you see things and how you view things. I dare someone to begin to get up and start, 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 start getting up early in the morning, pray and then go back to bed. And watch how the Lord begins to start setting your day. Don't do it just for things that you want, but do it so that you might know God's will. Lord, how can I serve you? How can I do what you want me to do? What do you want me to do today? You remember Lazarus. Jesus comes to the tomb. And before he says, Lazarus, come forth, he prays. But he says, Lord, we've already had this conversation. We've already talked about what we were going to do with Lazarus and that he was going to come forth and everything else. So for, 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 for their sake, I, I'm saying this right here, so that they understand that you sent me. And Jesus just says, Lazarus, come forth. The relationship had already been established. God already knew what he was going to do. And he let us in on the secret. That's what he wants to do with you. Let you in on the secret. Show you things you never could even imagine. So you can do things you couldn't even imagine. Why not walking in the power and the authority? Because God says, listen, you got to get the assignment first. Father, I thank you for these, your people. Thank you for your word on this evening. I 
thank you, Lord God, that your word does not return void, but it goes out and accomplishes that which you said that it would, that they would walk in power and authority. In Jesus' name, amen. On this week, remember, uh, our Bishop Shelby, he'll be uh, speaking on this Sunday, 11 o'clock worship service at God's House Church. I pray that you all are staying safe. I pray that you're wearing your mask. Until next time, God bless you. The Bible says, given it shall be given and get measure pressed down, shaken together. So I mean to give unto you. Remember to go and be a blessing to someone this week. In Jesus' name, we'll see you next time. Love you.